assembled in China, but designed in California, Japan, or Europe. That's been the story of China for the 30 years since I first came here. China has copied other people's ideas rather than coming up with its own. But now China wants to produce world-beating innovation. You're going to look at the secret inner life of the stars. That's correct. Seven million of them. Yes. I want to see whether innovation by state decree works. This is a 3D printing pan and at the moment it's smoking. And, uh, smoking? Yeah. <laughs> or is Chinese culture holding back creativity? You're going to show the world that Chinese kids can innovate just like anyone else. So are we looking at another 30 years of beg, borrow and steal? Or can China turn itself into a real innovator? I'm in Shenzhen, China's answer to Silicon Valley and its youngest, most entrepreneurial city. We're to Kejinanlu. China is deeply concerned that it's not innovative enough. Few, if any, of its companies are considered innovative by global standards, and Nobel Prizes for science remain frustratingly elusive. But now China is pouring money into creating the next big products and ideas. It spends over one trillion renminbi, or a hundred billion pounds, every year in the great drive to produce the next breakthroughs and overtake the West. So who is benefiting from this new commitment to innovation? I've tracked down some young innovators at one of China's Hi. first meeting places for startups. Hello, everybody. Hello. How are you? Hi. Yang Yang and Winnie are a husband and wife team with a 3D printing business. They say, um, and 3D printing a vase that you can use after for your flowers, actually. Like everyone here, they've spent time abroad and come home bursting with ideas. But there are plenty of obstacles, starting with funding. You can borrow money from the banks or from the government, but unless you have a solid prototype to actually demonstrate them, yeah. you won't get uh, very far. It's a bank. Are very, seems very conservative about about this mm. kind of a business model. So are they risk averse? Do they try to avoid risk? Uh, of course, yeah. China's banks are mostly controlled by the state. They rarely lend to small companies, let alone to startups. Guming has designed a smartwatch alerting pregnant women to take exercise. Hi, I'm Karen. Nice meeting you. Have a seat, please. When she came back from the US, she had a secure job at a big internet company until she gave it all up to strike out on her own. So do you think that it's your experience abroad which somehow makes you more creative? I, w I wouldn't say make me more creative, but make me more likely to take risks, mm. I think. Yeah. But because in traditional Chinese culture, people I encourage to take less risks. If you have a good position in big company like Tencent, you uh, probably won't take risks to start your own business. So um, my innovation is a robot that can see 3D objects and react to it in real time. Basically, everything human can do with eyes and hands can be done with this kind of technology, with a robot that can see. It's a great pitch, but he doesn't have any investors yet, nor does he have much of a team. I had an uh, intern who we, we actually spent a lot of time talk to each other over email, but in the end, he refused me saying that his family is refusing him to join my company because his family think, you know, this company is either, uh, I don't know, it's not secure. It cannot provide a, a kind of lifelong job. At least in Shenzhen, there are plenty of like-minded people to share these struggles. I'm seeing more and more people doing their own startup. So they are trying to 
chase their own dream, and that's what I observe. And I definitely think Chinese government is encouraging them. But there's no such thing as instant success. Well, it's nice to see an inventor at their work desk. Yep. Yang Yang and Winnie are working on a pen which writes in plastic. And at the moment, it's smoking. It's and uh, smoking. Yep. <laughs> and um, I had an idea two weeks ago, and I'm uh, trying to make it make a walking prototype in two weeks. Innovation is often a process of trial and error. Mm, a lovely smell of hot, yes. burning plastic. It's really horrible, I know. <laughs> in all politeness, yeah. it's not yet the finished product, is it? No, no. no. Lone innovators like these are certainly thinking outside the box. But if China's to make it to the innovation top table, its biggest companies need to scale it up. Mobile phone giant ZTE says it puts innovation at the heart of its brand. The company files more than 2,000 patents a year and pours around a tenth of its revenue back into R&D. So why hasn't ZTE yet delivered a breakthrough product that changes our lives? So it's quite an impressive showroom. So it's yeah. your latest thing. China is a market where people change their mobile phone really often, mm. don't they? Um, so the, I guess they're hungry for new innovations. What's the next big thing? Yeah, for the cell phone, we are trying to announce so we have the best picture quality cell phone worldwide. As well as good picture quality, ZTE has also introduced tighter security features. I suppose, though, um, Dr. Sen, that those are still, you know, these are still quite small, incremental mm -hmm. advances. Are you, have you got any people working on things that are radically different? Visa card, MasterCard. Yeah. This card can be replaced by the cell phone right. at this moment. So what's our idea is like the, the cell phone? to be a part of for your life, you can no longer leave that alone. All very useful, but I doubt the innovators at Apple or Samsung are having sleepless nights just yet. China makes around 80% of the world's mobile phones, but designs very few. This has been the story of China for the past 30 years. Its low-paid workers assemble the products that were designed or developed elsewhere. But now growth is slowing. It's a dangerous point. China won't thrive unless it moves up the value chain. Oh my gosh, look, there we are. Oh, yeah, so th is this your video conferencing thing then? Yeah, it is. China has to design as well as manufacture. Dr. Sun believes ZTE's latest work on 5G networks is as good as anyone's. Yeah, definitely, there's a lot. So, what, right now is 4G just deployed and we began the game for the 5G. And who's going to win the game for 5G? Are yeah. you going to win it or is Apple going to win it? Oh, the 5G is uh, just uh, the starting the game. So I believe everybody just enjoys the start of the game. Oh, you're avoiding answering the question. Dr. Sun may be being coy, but the company has an entire army of R&D workers dedicated to making sure that ZTE wins this next game. This company is spending about a billion pounds on innovation every year. They've got 27,000 people in R&D, both here in China and around the world. I'm about to meet a couple of them. Hello, Hello. there. Hello. How's your day? It's fine. Tell me how innovation works at the company. How do you come up with new ideas? Mm, we do have the, the competition of all the company. Uh, have you taken part in any of them? I submit several great ideas, but uh, no one of them win the prize. Oh, no. Yeah. Even at one of the proudest innovators in China, there's an acceptance from some that the big ideas are coming from elsewhere. You're competing with some of the really big global giants in telecoms like Apple or Samsung. Can you compare in innovation? I think uh, maybe Apple can generate more creative ideas that uh, change the living style of the society. Uh, but uh, currently, all innovations 
mostly focus on the how to solve the actual problems exist in the system. Since the 1980s, it's worked well for this company, it's worked well for China to focus on small innovations, to take somebody else's big idea and to deliver it to market faster or cheaper. But now they're a global player and the challenge is to get the big breakthrough innovations which will change the landscape for everyone. China's position in the Global Innovation Index is improving, but it's still only 29th, a weak performance for the world's second biggest economy. Some worry that China will never join the top table because Chinese people just aren't taught to think creatively. The Chinese school system is all about mass learning, discipline and tests. It culminates in the dreaded high school exam, the Gaokao. Jiang Xuetian has brought me to Shenzhen Middle School to show me how kids here learn. So tell me about this national exam, this notorious or famous Gaokao. Right. What is it doing that's holding students up in innovation? This is basically military boot camp for test takers. So for a whole year, all they do, they eat, they sleep, and they dream the Gao Kao. And all they're doing is basically memorizing answers, memorizing facts and data. But today, this Gao Kao class is going to take a break from their normal intensive routine. We want to test what happens when they are asked to innovate. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Today, we're going to do something different. How often do you play games in class? No. You don't play any games? No. I'm going to give each group one egg. And this egg is very important. This is your baby. You have to protect this egg, okay? We are going to throw the egg off the balcony. But it has to survive. Let's move. <laughs> You're all going to make me proud, right? You're going to show the world that Chinese kids can innovate just like anyone else. Are you making a parachute, Jiang Lu san? You making the, not a parachute, right? You're making a little box. Yeah. How you get? How you get? I like this. It's like an airbag in the car. Dropping an egg from that height is a pretty tough test, but two of the groups have done it. All the good eggs, step forward. You are the winners of the BBC Shenzhen Middle School Innovation Competition. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> So that was a whole lot of fun, not something they do every day, and shows that Chinese kids, just like kids anywhere in the world, can think outside the box and innovate when they're given a chance. So this is like the most if China's going to become truly innovative, it needs to understand creativity. So the idea in China is, look, we'll, we'll just take Steve Jobs, reverse engineer him and then mass produce him in China. They, they really don't understand the creative. It basically requires a culture of openness, diversity and risk taking that right now doesn't exist in China. But, you know, China right now, the priority is creativity. It is innovation. And they will reach that point after 
many missteps. The government does accept that education needs to change. China is an authoritarian country. Uh, President Xi Jinping is committed to education reform. And if he says that education reform is important, everyone listens. Innovation is now one of the top priorities for China's communist government. It's about more than economic survival. It's about national identity and national pride. In Beijing in 2009, on the 60th anniversary of the communist revolution, the top brass celebrated the achievements of state innovation, space exploration and a cutting edge telescope. I've been allowed to see the real thing. Above me and on both sides is a building chock full of Chinese innovation. We've been given special access to this cutting edge national research project. They want us to see what China's capable of when it sets its mind to it. So now we just have to wait for it to get dark. This is the largest optical telescope of its kind in the world. It's three times as big as its nearest American rival. Mirror A that we're yes, about to see. Yes, that's right. This is house the mirror A of the telescope, the Schmidt Crafter. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thanks so much for bringing me up here. Uh, what are we looking at? Yes, we are inside the dome that housed the mirror A of this gigantic telescope. Mirror A. Oh, yes. something's moving. Yes, the dome is now opening now. So. And that is the sky. Yes. <laughs> and there's even some stars up there. Now, that is a very unfamiliar sight across uh, any Chinese city. The key piece of technology was developed in China. 4,000 robotically controlled optical fibers, each capturing the light of a distant star. This telescope is capable of taking the spectrum of up to about 4,000 stars simultaneously. You can look at... Yes more stars, so it's not actually new, it's just more than ever done before. No, uh, well, I think it's new so far. The astronomers haven't really got the two to take the spectrum of so many stars and to get an, uh, a census. Chinese history has had several golden ages for science and innovation, but over the past few centuries, it's fallen behind. The hope is that projects like this will push the boundaries of Chinese scientific research and help recover national pride. You know, China has very long civilization and China has to be used to be quite advanced. But we lag far behind now. And I think this is the time people to, for Chinese people to regain that confidence. When I first came to China 30 years ago, this kind of project was unthinkable. China's come such a long way since then. It can now afford to think big and build on a grand scale. But if China is going to be a truly innovative power, it needs breadth as well as depth. Not just the National Glory Project, but the bedroom startups too. Zhang Hao, one of the inventors we met in Shenzhen, has invited us to see his robotic arm in action. So the camera here sees where the workpiece is and the robot follows the workpiece. I can have my robot clean the table for me as long as the robot recognizes all the objects on top of the table. I can make the robot do cooking for, for me. I can make it do almost anything. Both Hao and his girlfriend Xue Fei have complete faith in what the robot will be able to do. Neither of us like to do housework. That would be the solution in the future, right? It might take like 10 <coughs> or decades, but should be good in the end. Yeah, like I, ha I have faith on that. Right. <laughs> but we, he probably would have went bankrupt several, several times during the Before first... Before Yeah, exactly. But I'll be there. They represent something new in China. 
an emerging creative generation with a different worldview from their parents. My father and mother and their generation are more likely to be satisfied working in an existing company. They don't want to be extreme in any way, like in, even in good ways. The younger ones, the newer generation, you have, you have more chance to decide what you want to do, how you want to spend your life. Uh, this generation will be the group of people who actually push China forward. We are responsible for like the future of the country, like where, where it will go. How and Xue Fei are exactly what the Chinese government says it wants, a new creative class. But there's a catch. Communists and creatives don't generally mix. There's a dilemma here for the government. It needs the creative class, but that means permitting them to think for themselves. What we know is the creative class, they push boundaries, they ask questions, they question authority, that's how they become creative. So we don't know that this means the end of the Communist Party. What we do know is that this means a transformation of society and the political system. Empowering a genuinely creative generation remains a huge challenge for the Chinese government. China's at a turning point. It can no longer grow by copying, it has to innovate. And that means changing everything from education to the way the economy works and politics. But what happens when the need to innovate clashes with the Communist Party's need to control? Which will win? The government wants innovation, but it also wants control. The paradox at the heart of China's future. And no one yet knows whether it can have both.